All right, class. So for today, we are going to be learning about the elements of a short story in our flipped classroom lesson. All right, so by the end of the lesson, you will be able to identify the elements of a short story as well as define the elements of a short story. Now on Google Classroom, you should have gone to the link uh, for the short story graphic organizer that you need to fill out as I go through this lesson. And this is what it looks like. You will list the element, then you'll write the definition, and then you'll give the example that I provide for you in uh, the slideshow. Okay, so first, just to start things off, I wanted to go over what exactly is a short story. Um, a short story is a brief fictional narrative that is shorter than a novel and usually deals with only a few characters. And it's also going to be um, 75 words or under, 7,500 words or under, um, hence the name short story. It's going to focus on one single event or idea. And the image I have here is a, a short story called The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe, and we will actually be reading this in our unit. Okay, so here are the seven elements that we're going to be going over. We have characterization, setting, plot, conflict, theme, tone and mood, and point of view. Now these are going to be the seven that are going to fit into those seven spaces in your graphic organizer and I'm going to go through each of them individually. Okay, so first we have characterization. And this is going to be the process by which the writer reveals the personality of a character, and it can be direct or indirect. And um, the differences between direct and indirect, um, if an author is giving a direct characterization, um, the writer is going to be making direct statements about the character's personality. Now with indirect characterization, the author is going to indirectly portray the character's, the character's personality um, using things like dialogue, um, appearance, or actions. So the example I have here is um, stating that a student began shaking right before a big test is a way of indirectly describing her nervousness. So the author isn't saying, she was really nervous before the test. He's using her actions to portray that to the reader. All right, the next um, element we have is setting. This is where it tells the reader where and when the story takes place. And it's important to note that this includes things like weather, time of day, time of year. And the example I have here is actually a picture kind of this creepy rundown house. Um, and this is actually the setting of one of the short stories we're going to read, also by Edgar Allan Poe, called The Fall of the House of Usher. Okay, next we move on to plot. And the plot is going to be a series of events in which the writer reveals what is happening to whom and why. And the image I have here is your, um, your standard plot diagram. And it's important to note that all stories don't follow this um, diagram. Um, each story is unique, and um, the climax may be in the beginning and the end. It doesn't necessarily have to be right there in the middle. Um, it just kind of depends on the story, so that's important to remember. And the example I have down here is um, the plot, just a very shortened plot of Finding Nemo, um, a movie that I'm sure you all have seen, so hopefully I'm not giving anything away. So Nemo is stolen. Um, his father goes on a search to get Nemo back, has an interesting adventure, and ultimately finds his son. So that's just the, the blueprint of the story, essentially. All right, next we have conflict. This is going to be a struggle between two opposing forces, um, a problem that drives the plot, and this can be internal or external. So internal is usually referred to as um, man versus self, so this is a conflict that is going on inside of someone. So um, a really great example is Hamlet, um, which you all probably won't read until um, a little bit further on in high school. But um, the character's having this internal struggle um, 
if he's seeing his father's ghost, uh, so it's within himself. It's something you can't physically see on the outside. And um, an example that's more relevant to you guys, uh, the main conflict in the Hunger Games is man versus society, which would fall into, into the external uh, conflict side. So it's something outside of the character's self. And the man versus society is the people of the districts rebelling against the capital, which is the society. Okay, next we move on to theme. The theme is going to be the controlling idea or central insight of a piece of fiction. And here I have um, a Tagzito that I created. And Tagzito is a really great website that we're going to utilize later on in the semester. But it's just kind of a mashup of um, all different kinds of uh, common themes that you'll find within uh, literature. So I have betrayal, heroism, love, and then up here I have insanity, which is going to be the major theme of one of the works that we read this unit. And the example I have down here for you all is a major theme in the Hunger Games is inequality. So you can see that present within the districts. Um, you know, in the capital they have tons of food, they get to wear lavish outfits, but then like in District 12 where Katniss lives, you know, people are starving and wearing rags. So you're seeing that inequality and it's present throughout the film and is a major theme. Okay, next we're going to move over to tone and mood, which are just one element. I just combined them together. But it's important to note that these words aren't interchangeable. They don't mean the same thing. The tone's going to be the speaker's attitude, and the mood's going to be the emotional effect that the text creates for the, on for the audience. And again, I created a tagzito down here. It's a mashup of different tone and mood words. So I have a static, modest, hostile, and it might be kind of good for you to, to pause here and see if you can pick through, you know, which of those words is a tone word, which of those words is a mood word, and it'll be some good practice for the lesson that we're going to do later on. <clears throat> and the example I have down here for you is the mood in the opening scene of Finding Nemo is very somber. Um, as I'm sure most of you have seen the movie, like I said, uh, the beginning is where uh, Nemo's mother dies. So um, that opening mood gives you a feeling of sadness and you're it's very somber okay <clears throat> next we have point of view and this is the angle or perspective from which the story is told and it can be first second or third person and I have this little graphic down here to kind of help you differentiate those things so first person the writer is going to be using I, me, and my. If they're writing in second person, they'd be using you and your. Or if third person, they'd be using he, him, his, she, and her. So um, The Hunger Games is written in third person. So you could look through the text and see that the author uses those words right here in this bottom area. All right, so I kind of quickly went through that. So if you didn't, uh, if you missed a definition or an example on your graphic organizer, please go back through the video. Um, you could start at the beginning of the presentation and catch up and fill those things in. And also, I want you on the back of your graphic organizer um, to pick three of the elements that we just went over, so any of the seven, and I want you to provide your own example of that element. So don't use the one that I provided you with in the slideshow, um, but create your own. And it can be from a book, a movie, a TV show, you know, whatever you want. And I have one down here, just an example of kind of what I want you guys to write. Um, don't have it bulleted, make it a full sentence, and maybe even more than that if you feel like writing more. So I picked setting and I said, in the ocean in modern day is the setting for the film. Finding Nemo. So I want you to do that for three of them on the back. So come to class um, with your completed graphic organizers, all seven of those filled out, and then the closing activity um, on the back as well. And please, please bring those with you to class tomorrow um, so we can get started on our unit on the short story. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.